Valley. My name is Dr. Roberta Milliken, and I'm the Dean of Campus and Community Relations here at Ohio Chillicothe, and I'd like to welcome everyone here this evening. Well, will you please remain standing while a, a student comes up and leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If you can, you can just turn and face the flag. Matthew Hardesty is going to be leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join with us in the Pledge to the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Dr. Rob Motes for bachelor's and master's degrees. 
award recipients Susan Nicely and Patricia Bennett. Members of the Coordinating Council, Kurt McAllister and Dr. Richard Rooney. And then we of course have our members of our campus staff and administration, our facilities and grounds crews, and our students. And lastly, the distinguished faculty of Ohio University Chillicothe, which includes our adjunct faculty members as well. Please join me in a round of applause for these individuals. Standing here today on our beautiful campus, I am reminded that Ohio University Chillicothe exists because of the far sighted local leaders, elected officials, generous corporate and community service organizations, and ordinary citizens wanted it, willed it, and made this institution happen. I am pleased to observe that now, 75 years later, the tradition of cooperation that created Ohio Chillicothe still exists. For if it were not for the hopes, desires, aspirations, and funding from local industries, businesses, and residents, Ohio Chillicothe would simply not exist today. As the first college branch in Ohio, this campus stands as a testament to perseverance and cooperation. Our graduates today have demonstrated considerable fortitude in facing the pandemic. They persisted and faced the challenges of virtual learning, social distancing, mask wearing, and vaccinations in order to complete their goals and obtain their degrees. Their accomplishments today, therefore, are to be commended. This kind of perseverance, courage, and focus are hallmark features of this class, but also, but also all Ohio University graduates. So this, this evening, we are gathered to celebrate them. While recognizing our current graduates, it seems appropriate to honor some of the campus's past students who have made their marks in their professions and in their communities. These are the individuals who have set the high standard and established the legacy that today's graduates will continue. In recognition of their service to the university, philanthropic support, success in their professional fields, and service to the community, we recognize these individuals as distinguished alumni of Ohio University Chillicothe. Through their professional achievements and their and service to their communities, they embody the spirit of Ohio Chillicothe. I am very pleased to announce this year's award recipient is Susan Nicely. Susan was born in Florida and moved to Ohio with her family during her sophomore year of high school. Susan graduated from Unioto High School in 1992 and started her college career at Ohio Chillicothe's campus. But she never had the fourth grade experience of visiting Mound City on a field trip. She transferred to Ohio State University and earned her first, first Bachelor of Arts in Anthropology in 1998, focusing on biological anthropology and researching human genetics. It was there that she realized her first-class archaeological site was literally in her backyard. Susan began her journey with the National Park Service by volunteering for the Hopewell Culture and National Historic Parks Archaeology Group in the summer of 1997. In the spring of 2000, Susan became an interpretive seasonal ranger at Hopewell Culture. She immediately began revising and working on the curriculum of the park's educational programs and networking with the county ed educators. Her passion for telling the community about the amazing earthworks in her neighborhood led to her pursuing an education degree at Ohio Chillicothe. In 2013, Susan graduated from Ohio Chillicothe with a Bachelor's of Science in Middle Childhood Education and became the park's first education technician. During her 22 years at Global Culture National Historic Park, she has developed many educational programs and is now the Chief of Interpretation, Education, and Outreach. 
She resides in West, Western Ross County with her husband Brian and her children Caleb and Hannah. Please join me now in recognizing the 2022 recipient of the Distinguished Alumni Award, Susan Knight. Feelings of nervousness, self-doubt, irrational fears is something going 
way wrong creep in when I think about speaking in front of an audience. I have a hunch that many of you graduates also know those feelings all too well. As you are preparing and taking all of those exams, writing papers, giving classroom presentations, or having discussions with your professors, all the things you likely had to do to get to where you are now. So when Dean Miller can ask me to do this today, my mind turned to all of you who overcame and worked through those self-defeating thoughts to accomplish what we are celebrating here today. And it is important for me to say to you and those alumni of Ohio, and you and those alumni of Ohio University Chillicothe that you now join. You've impressed me more than I can express, and my work with you has been a real source of joy in my life. But before I get too much into that, let me first say congratulations. Congratulations on earning your degree from Ohio University. I understand that the road to get here was challenging. Challenges aren't all bad, right? In fact, many of them can help us learn and grow. But I'm not so far out of school that I have forgotten the unique difficulties college life can pose. Late and sleepless nights spent writing papers and studying for exams, having to deal with self-doubt and come to class, be engaged, get your work done, and demonstrate that you're learning the material, all the while having to navigate life outside of school, including work and family responsibilities, time with your loved ones, losing loved ones, helping others, health issues, personal struggles, accidents, tragedies, the list goes on and on. And add to that the challenge of doing this through a pandemic, where many of you, and us up here, had to adapt to school online, quickly losing face-to-face -face contact with professors and classmates, and having to learn the ins and outs of a new mode of learning, including what is synchronicity and asynchronicity, right? Muting and unmuting, um, the nuances of Zoom and Teams, often encountering computer and internet problems along the way, and trying to stay focused while worrying about the well-being of yourself and others. Through this, some of us were fortunate to have people in our lives supporting us and encouraging us to stay the course, while others had to forge ahead without that precious support system that can elevate us when times are particularly tough. Our society went through this dramatic shift that few of us were prepared for, but through all of these ordinary and extraordinary challenges, you made it to this point. No, it wasn't always good sailing. Right? Even under the best of conditions, it rarely is. But as stated in the African proverb, as smooth seas do not make skilled sailors. I hope you remember this. By getting to this point, you demonstrate that invaluable quality that will serve you well as you move forward onto the next chapter of your lives. Resilience. You did not give up. You have the capacity to recover after experiencing great difficulties. And I hope through these challenges that you can see, if you don't already, that you have this strength inside of you. It is no small feat getting you where you are now, but here you are. And if you can get through this, imagine what else you can do. And I have to tell you, I have a lot of hope in what you can accomplish in the future. My teaching career spans 20 years in five different institutions of higher learning, and I've had the wonderful opportunity to watch students dive into their studies and develop knowledge and a deep passion and concern for the subjects they are learning about in their classes. And before I move on from here, I have to say, that's a huge achievement in my book. We live in a world that increasingly encourages us to shorten our attention spans, lose focus quickly, and not engage with new and challenging ideas. So doing the work, thinking deeply about the subject matter, and being willing to seriously study and contemplate the material is a great accomplishment in and of itself. But while I've encountered wonderful students at all of these institutions that I have worked at, I have never been as inspired by my students I have been at Ohio University in Chillicothe. OUC students have impressed me not only with their thoughtfulness and passion, but also by their strong desire to actually do something about the things they are concerned and passionate about, whether that be through their chosen careers or other civic activities. I feel very fortunate that I also get to work with colleagues who are sitting behind me here tonight that have encouraged you and helped you develop opportunities to do these great things. I have watched OUC students become compelled by what they learn in their classes to stand up for what they think is right, even in the face of great opposition. I have worked with students who have been out of school for years, sometimes decades, working jobs, serving in the military, raising families, and working through serious personal struggles. They come to OUC to earn degrees that lead to fulfilling jobs in which they can make a meaningful contribution in their workplaces, to others, or to the society at large. I have watched OUC students work to raise awareness of issues that concern them in both small and large ways. 
They share their informed and at times unpopular perspectives with friends and family. They organize and participate in events on campus and in the community to bring the late topics that they earnestly believe in themselves and now and if not by them, who. I have watched OUC students organize collection drives and raise funds to support local organizations that are tackling the issues they are concerned about. I have watched OUC students reach out to the news media and their elected officials to talk with them about their concerns and encourage them to get involved. I have watched our students work on campaigns to get people elected that they think will fight for their community. And I have watched OUC students move into careers where they commit themselves to being fair and just and to helping others and to careers where they hope to make a difference in their communities and in the lives of the people they will serve. I have often asked myself, who are you? Right? Who are these people? Who, who are these people who are going to school, dealing with all of these ordinary and extraordinary challenges, who often leave their comfort zone, work through those self-doubts, and take on the added responsibility of having uncomfortable conversations with others when they think it is important to do so, taking the risk of going back to school after years of being out, helping others they don't know, tackling tough problems that play with communities, and finding to make the world a better place. What is it about this place that distills this courage to not simply lament about how things are, but take personal responsibility and contribute to their communities and the larger society in a meaningful way? It's incredible, and you have made OUC an incredibly rewarding place for me to work. Now I'll move on to the next phase and join those alumni of the Hawaii University of Chillicothe who came for you. Some of you will go on with your education, while others will start looking for fulfilling jobs or continue on with the jobs you have now. And I ask myself, what words of advice can I give you as you embark on this next chapter? So I'll leave you with a few ideas that were largely inspired by my students here at UC. First, if you did not already know this, you have power. It may not always seem like it, but you do. For those of you who didn't take a sociology class, and I know a lot of you did, um, sociology is the study of society and its effect on us. And we, as society, have a powerful influence on the individuals within it. But the key here is that each of you is a member of society, and you have the power to act in ways that can change society for the better, and even for the worse. The choices we can make in any given situation are often limited, but we can still make a choice, even one that diverges from the choices others are making. Many of us don't realize that we possess this power. For example, there's a strong body of social science research that shows us that we are less likely to be helpful the more people that are around. We call this the bystander effect. For example, if a person witnesses a car accident on the highway, they're less likely to call 911 if there are other witnesses present. Everyone is assuming that someone else will do something, which decreases the likelihood that any one of us will do anything at all. Social science research also shows us that there is strong pressure to conform to what others think or do, even when, if what everyone else is doing makes us uncomfortable or goes against our personal values. When asked about their core values, many Americans mention fairness, individualism, justice, honesty, hard work, responsibility, respect for others, and loving those in need. But how often have we found ourselves in social situations with friends, family, classmates, co-workers, and even strangers where it was difficult to live up to these values? Maybe we do these things because we were encouraged by others. Maybe we're just going along and get along. Maybe we're just simply doing this because of that desire to be accepted by the group and not make ways. Being part of the group can give us a sense of comfort, a feeling like we are not alone. And it can be so much easier in the moment to go along with the group than to go against the brain. But we must consider the toll this takes on us personally and collectively when our actions or our silence undermine our core values that we hold so dear. These social pressures are strong, but you are strong too, and you can do something different even when these social pressures encourage you to do otherwise. If you think something needs to be done, be the one to do it. If you have a concern, raise it. Have the courage to do what you think is right. Don't be the bystander who is expecting someone else to do it or say it first. Dare to be brave in your treatment and interactions with others. Do the best work that you can at work. And if you need help, ask. And maybe offer help when you can. Be a loving and supportive family member and friend. They will remember how you made them feel for years to come. Invest some time in making your home, your neighborhood, your community and society a better place for folks to live in. Treat others with dignity and respect, 
even the smallest act of kindness for another can amount to the best thing that has happened in that person's day, maybe even their week or year. You have that power. You have the power to make choices you can be proud of, and you can act in ways that lift others up rather than cut them down. Being an active director in your own life and doing what you think is right is not always easy. And you, like everyone else, will make mistakes along the way. But remember, smooth seas do not make skilled sailors. And as the author Maya Angelou once said, we may encounter many defeats, but we must not be defeated. We can learn from our mistakes and come out stronger for it. If you draw on that strength and that power that resides inside of you to do what you think is right, even in the face of adversity, then I believe you will go far in enhancing the lives of others as well as your own. My second piece of advice is not to judge the body of cover. In, in sociology, we call this thinking critically about stereotypes. You all remember that. When we are constantly among groups of people who may look like us, live like us, believe like us, it becomes easier to see others who are not part of those groups as fundamentally different from ourselves, maybe even as inferior. We start to think in terms of in-groups and out-groups, us versus them. But something I learned from teaching is that there is great diversity among people we assume to be part of the same group, and similarities between people that we believe come from different worlds altogether. When we focus only on the stuff that divides us, we deny ourselves the opportunity to build empathy, gain insight, and be potentially great people. I can say this from personal experience, that I did not know what to expect when I started working at OU Chillicothe. I grew up in an industrialized section of Los Angeles, California, went to school in San Francisco, and then went on to get my master's and doctoral degrees at Ohio State in Columbus. I'd only lived in cities and had very little experience in smaller towns and rural communities. And so when I got the job at OUC, I was excited to work with my students, but I did wonder if the examples I usually use in class would resonate with these students, many of which had what seemingly was a different life experience for me. And there are some differences there, right? But what I quickly learned is how that, even if you grew up in a different place, we shared a lot in common. And my students further enlightened me by exemplifying course concepts with different examples and life experiences that I was unfamiliar with. I have learned so much from my students, and I have watched them learn from each other. Not everyone in the classroom agrees with each other on all things, but the classroom can be this magical place where we get the chance to be around people who are different from us in some way, who voice a perspective that is different from our own, and we can do it respectfully and maybe even gain a little bit of mutual understanding in the process. Lastly, take time to do the things that bring you joy and to be with the people that you love who also add real value to your life. I wish I had made more time to do this when I was younger. I was so busy working and going to school and studying all the time that I felt perpetually exhausted. Um, but uh, what I, I learned is that even though that feeling doesn't ever totally go away when you're working, in my experience, making time to surround yourself with beauty, to experience new places, or to have lunch with a supportive friend can have a revitalizing effect in lift one's spirits. Over the years, I've had the good fortune of having colleagues and students direct me to such beautiful places around here to hike or have lunch in, like Buzzard's Roost, Spring Seal, and the Oklahoma Mounds. Now that I'm teaching more students online from around Ohio, I'm getting more suggestions, suggestions for places to visit around the state. By the way, I hear that Catherine in Jackson County is amazing. You don't already know. So <laughs> that's on my summer to-do list. Uh, maybe hiking isn't your thing, but when you get a moment, take time to do those activities or be around those people that rejuvenate you. And don't drain you. And if I can't even be so bold to suggest it, resist the urge to text, check your phone for updates, or post pictures of your experience on your social media pages while you're in the midst of experiencing it. Our phones, while helping us keep in touch with others, can also be a big distraction and keep us from enjoying every second of those invaluable moments we have in those special places, doing what fulfills us, or with those people that we hold so dear. To wrap this up, remember everything that you have achieved during your time at Ohio University Chillicothe. Reflect on it. Embrace it. Don't ever devalue what you have accomplished here. You have the power to overcome serious challenges and to make a difference once you leave this auditorium tonight. 
I know you have made a significant impact on me, and working with you has been one of the greatest honors of my life, and I mean that sincerely. So once again, let me say to you, along with everyone else who is here for you tonight, congratulations to the 2022 graduating class of Ohio University Chillicothe. I am so excited to see what you will do next. Thank you. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all their support throughout this process. 
forward to receive your certificate and remain standing as you are recognized. Please hold your applause until the end after all the names have been called. Alani Fannin, Associate Degree in Business Management and Technology. Stephanie Merritt, Associate Degree in Child Development. Andrew Carroll, I'm wondering if I got the right list somewhere. Uh, associate degree in computer science technology. No? Okay, Danielle Sheets. Associate degree in human services technology, Haley Daniels. Associate degree in law enforcement technology, Lindsay Young. Associate Degree in Medical Assisting Technology. Katie Causey, Bachelor Degree in
education, Kung Fu. Sarah Burton, Bachelor of Science in Education, Early Childhood Education, Summa Kung Fu.
Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Thank you. 
class of 2022. Graduates, join me in a round of applause to show your appreciation. 